And let's get straight to our topic proper for today, which is basically around the uh, anti-open grazing law, uh, which has become very controversial and then, again, topical, uh, particularly in the southern part of the country right now. Some people say that is uh, uh, an issue that is for a long-time debate. But let's begin that debate uh, at, at this point. Felix, I'm coming back to you quickly about this whole issue. You and I had talked here the other time the 17 southern governors met and they made the resolutions, including how that uh, by September 1, all 17 states should have already passed the open grazing bill into law. We know for a fact that a number of states have done that. We have states that haven't done that. Is, is it possible is it possible to still be on the same page at this level where you have set certain states including Edo for example having not passed that uh, bill into law yeah the, the beauty of democracy is that you need to have a consensus of opinion mm. you will not have canalized opinion where everybody would think the same way consensus majority will carry the day uh, the, the situation of the anti grazing law as we are seeing it right now is the issue of political will and political balancing. For example, from the time they met in Lagos, the governor of Cross River State did not attend. He sent a representative. So we are also believing that he is foot dragging. In fact, essentially, Cross River State has not even started discussion about the bill at all. Mm. Edo State, the last administration in Edo State had discussed something related to this anti open grazing bill when they were talking of ranching then. Mm -hmm. But it was not There was only a public hearing. Yes, there was public hearing. Mm. Okay, so it was not concluded. And uh, today, the Edo State government, and we know the state of the Edo State House of Assembly right now, I don't think they are taking it as a critical issue yet. The matter has not been properly tabled mm. in the House. Other states, such as Ebonyi, they are food dragging also. Ebonyi State has not done anything pragmatic. Uh, Anambra State started discussion. Anambra State, through Spanish the works, by changing the, the proposition to say, if you have a farm, and the headsman's heads run to your farm and destroy your products well they could pay you an agreed sum oh. so equating as the people argued in another state human lives to that of cattle that is quite unfortunate on oh. its own but some states on those states lagos state aqua bomb they have not just passed it to law the governors have given assent now that is the strong point you see in every situation, some places will drive the process. Others will be bystanders. Others will just be observers. So, some will want to tag along. Mm. Some will be the foreigners. Some will be in the vanguard. Others will just be in the wings. Mm. Either clapping as the momentum is going up or stylishly walking away if there is no encouragement. Right. But the first thing is that we must agree on is that by the time they met in Lagos, there was an expected response. A timeline had been set, September 1st. That timeline had passed. Some of the states have started signing. So it was not as if after they left, the matter just fizzled away. No. In a state as a do, it should have been taken with all seriousness. I am particularly bothered that the government of a do state has not taken it with the seriousness that it deserves. Because the fillers we get, the information that gets to the public domain, and reports from close friends and associates who are in the rural area is that the situation is getting worse by the day. It's not getting better. We should not be, we should not politicize this discussion. This is a matter of reality. Persons in rural areas can hardly actually go to farms now. If you check Asian land in particular, where they had to develop their own internal security network, they call Atanapa, they had to put up that one to even give respite to travelers and locals. I have friends who have farms there, and I ask them, some of them say they cannot go to the farms that are very far from their home. They only go to the one that is a bit close. Even that one, there is still the risk element. In the northern part of Edo State, Akoko Edo area, the same situation is happening. So, the issue of herdsmen and farmers that motivated the 17 certain governors mm. to meet in Lagos, we would have believed that, yes, but it is not always an easy thing to do, because most of the houses of assemblies of the states right. that will have to pass the legislation, we have to go through all the ropes. And, mm. of course, we cannot say all of them will work at the same pace. That exactly is what we are seeing right now, where we find that some states have moved ahead, they've concluded their own, they signed it to law, and we find that some governments have even, they've gone far, they have given assent. Mm. Other states are yet to move. And we want to encourage those states that are yet to move, 
not to slow down at this stage. Mm. Benue State had even started down long ago. They started into law. Because Benue State was moving almost on its own, there was no mm. proper implementation. Right. It was as if the law was not there. The implementation became a problem. Some of the states are not even yet to sign. They, are not, they have not signed. Mm. So do we have to now look at just going to the first stage, which is the legislative arm, the House of Assembly will discuss the bill, then enact it properly. You already mentioned states, just to, yes. uh, I'm sorry to bump in, because, before I get back to Chris, okay. I mean, you mentioned states a while ago that are either foot dragging or have not done much yes. uh, in, in this regard. Edo is in either of those categories, obviously. As it stands right now, a lot of persons have pointed that the Edo State House of Assembly has presently constituted the situation they are in, which of course started sometime last year, uh, in fact, it's 2019. And then going forward, a lot of persons have talked about how that the State House of Assembly doesn't have enough bites to drive this sort of process, given the political realities that they are dealing with and all of those intrigues in house and so on and so forth. And we have a number of states along that line uh, as well. What should a state like a do in particular, because whether you like it or not, the state charity begins at home. What should a state like a do be doing right now, starting with the leadership of the House of Assembly? You see, Uyi, a, a, do, a do state has a different coloration, which would have made it even easier for them to pass the bill. Okay. They are, they are present constitution or the composition of the house mm. would even make it easier let's be very sincere about this it's almost a one-party house right now or you say one-party house mm. as it is so if they are from one party what makes it difficult for them is it that they do not accept that we have a challenge or they want to conceptualize the challenge the anti-grazing challenge as if it is in consonance with what NIPS published because the Nigerian Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies in NIPS, mm. uh, NIPS Kuru just said that the problem between herdsmen and farmers should not be seen as a clash, rather it should be seen as trespass. And that is not true. It is not the case. It is a case of one economic arm oh. of a society impinging and deliberately decimating the capacity of another economic arm because they have a particular ethnic and official coloration. That is the problem we are facing. So, at those states, the deep reason I cannot say because I do not know, I'm not a member of the House, sure. but I would believe that the House of Assembly in a do state as presently constituted has the greater capacity right now to even draft a bill and quickly pass it to the governor who has no problem with the House again as we are seeing it, who is in consonance with the House as it is presently constituted because it suits its best interest. So the reason is before the governor and the house mm -hmm. what the public can do is to continue to encourage it just as we are doing now the matter should not be allowed to rest at their doorstep alone mm -hmm. if we do that we are going to be at the receiving in the long run because the cause the question you will answer in the long run is when the house of assembly did not act when the governor did not take initiative what did the public do so we won't leave it like that mm -hmm. we should continue to discuss with them. We should bring it to their consciousness that this is a critical matter. And those state also happens to be a very strategically located state between the west, oh. the east, and the northern part of the country. Right. So, Edo state is in the is in the hub, the center oh. of this activity because it's a meeting point. Okay. It's, a, it's, a, it's a fulcrum. And we find that these things cannot be wished away. So, the state should take a position. Okay. Good enough, Edo state has moved. Of course. Aqua Bomb has moved. Hmm. Lagos has moved. So, we well, cannot but for follow the same pattern. Oh, all right, uh, 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 Chris, you yes. look at the way it is today. I mean, the issue of uh, headsmen and the issue of uh, how that they pose, uh, their cattle pose uh, a lot of uh, security risk across the country, even in the north, for example. It's just that because uh, those of us in the south uh, feel a bit uh, more comfortable uh, with the situation, then, of course, the conversation is probably louder over here. However, I've seen people, I've heard people argue, even on public fora, that, look, if we had done the needful early enough, we won't be here. By that, you're saying that. In the first instance, long before today, governments and the people of this country should have understood straight away that cattle business is private business. But today, it has become a national conversation. Where is the broken link? The broken link is in the election of President Mohamedou Buhari, who instead of taking on the mandate of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, is tacitly, by body language and by inaction, seen and perceived to be 
the tacit protector and protege of a social cultural organization known as Mietiela, who are the social cultural organization that preside over the cattle breeders in Nigeria, is seen as their protege, and Mietiela is seen as a weaponry used by that social cultural organization, is a Fulani social cultural organization, to destabilize this country. That's the broken one. And I say that with all sense of responsibility because before now, before this present regime, before all these tensions that we have in Nigeria, we have always had cattle. We have always had headsmen. Oh. And we've always had our farms. And we have always cohabited. Oh. In fact, you could say in peace. Now, by all the arguments put up oh. about climate change and the need for migration for green and you know pastures oh. we understand all of that and we are not taking that away from the arguments but what we are saying is that the development oh. which we are experiencing today cannot be parallel to the climate change migration rather we have that as a cover mm. for another sinister agenda which Mieti Allah represents. And I'll tell you. Now, why is the country not sitting down in a dialogue? Forget what they could have done. Why is the country not sitting down in a dialogue to discuss this matter that is so important to the president and important to the social cultural organization? Have suggestions not been given as alternatives to stem and to prevent all of these tensions and all of this fighting, mm. has ranching not been suggested as a you know, best practice alternative all over the world to take care of cattle and still be able to provide whatever protein you get from that beef meat? They have all been suggested. But what has been the responses? The government of the day started first with Ruga. When that one didn't work, he went to uh, talk about the investment thing. That didn't work. The government of the day is talking about 368 grazing routes running across 25 states. All anachronistic ideas that are not backed by our laws, nor recognized by our constitution, driven by the government, not spoken by Mieti Allah. For six years, the preoccupation of this government has all been about cattle and where cattle will feed for six years. Why is the government the champion of a particular trade, just one particular trade, like spare parts trade, like uh, second-hand clothing trade, like uh, rubber sales? Why is the government the champion of cattle trading in Nigeria? So. These things have to be put in proper perspective. Mm. That is why I say it's the broken link. The government failed to take the responsibility of governance, the responsibility of uniting the various segments and sectors of society and how they interrelate with each other. Mm. This is just a trade and it has become a behemoth. It has become a problem for Nigeria to solve. If cattle rearing was put where it belongs as a trade, and then you have a Mieti Allah, which is a social cultural organization like Ohaneze, like Afenifere, like Pandev in the Niger Delta. Mm. Now, so a social cultural organization does not have any statutory powers to begin to talk about policies except as an opinion or a suggestion to existing policies, to begin to give others and insult governors the way they like, mm. to begin to, in fact, almost almost commands the president and then instructs the national assemblies of what they think they should do and they are operating unrestricted so arrogantly and the government of the day has not said or done anything about it mm. i want you to imagine if the ohanese in the southeast and the fire fire in the southwest decides to be as volatile and as arrogant as military allies the situation we have in the country right now. So the point is that the president we are we elected mm. to take over the reins of affairs 
And then, because in every society, you are going to have different diverse interests. And people are going to have to push for their interests. It is natural with society. But that is why you appoint and you elect a government. It is government's responsibility to take all of these interests in society, unite it together, and then make them work for each other and with each other for the development of society. But when a government is perceived by action and inaction to take side with a particular interest, and then that interest runs out of hand, both in terms of going against the laws of the country, making inflammatory statements, and bragging about, and then creating tension within the country. And the government does not see that anything is wrong with that. The government is complicit in whatever is resulting mm. from such inflammations. Now, uh, Mieti Allah have not pretended that they will make Nigeria ungovernable if we, Nigerians, do not submit by force to their only and one and singular idea about cattle rebellion, which is open grist. All of the tensions that have come out from that, all of the violence that have come out from that, all of the deaths, the sorrow that comes out from that on a daily basis is immaterial to Mieti Allah. What is important is that this cows must be on our streets, be in our farms, and then create clashes between those who, whoever is moving the cows with AK-49 and AK-47, raping our women, killing our men, destroying the southern economy. That's what is important to Mieti Allah. And they are being allowed hmm. to go and get along with that as for, for all you care. Now, as much as now, now, now that you have mentioned Mieti yes. Allah, I mean, quite a number of times, I want to talk to you about those states in particular yes. and what is happening there with regards to the same uh, yes. social cultural yes, uh, association. But just to put on record that uh, those state House of Assembly has received uh, a bill uh, as, I mean, regards, as regards the open, uh, anti open grazing uh, issue, and we've been told that uh, by reception of plenary. Uh, consideration of that bill will commence. Uh, however, we hope uh, they move quickly uh, with that bill. So let's talk about Meti Alain on those states, for example. Yeah. In the last couple of weeks, we've seen interfaces between them and the government of that state. Does that, uh, it, it, does that signal uh, a move in the right direction right now? They start from Benue. Hmm. And that's why I say when you have a social cultural organization that, by the way, let's put it on record, has no territory in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The Fulanese cannot tell you that this is their territory. The Edos, as a tribe, has its territory. The Yorubas have its territory. The Junkuns have their territory. The Thieves have their territory. Where is the territory of the Fulanese? From the Futagalon Island. In any case, we have accommodated them. They are dispersed everywhere, itinerant. Now, they formed themselves into a social cultural organization. It was allowed. But because the governor of Benue State say, said, Allow my people to do farming. Don't, in the name of cattle rearing and cattle protection, come into our farms, rape our women, kill their, their children, kill their husbands. Allow the Benue economy, the food basket of the nation, allow the Benue economy to grow uh -uh. side by side with yours by you getting a plot which we will provide for you to ranch your cattle and get all whatever you need there to take care of the cattle. So you are running your economy. You are running. In my own state, they went after our town. It was a long drawn battle. It's in the national space. We all know what happened there. It's the same tension in Ondo. So that's why I tell you that their sole interest and their sole agenda is to destabilize any economy or destabilize any state where the governor says, allow the, my, the economy of my state to grow. We have not said, don't don't rear your cattle. Oh. We have said there's a world best practice, accepted, tested, proven in Brazil, in all over the world. Do cattle ranching and do it as business. When you come to America, we have what we call spare part market. If you go to a uh, uh, day day in Abuja, you have you have uh, uh, what we call uh, building material market. You have specialized markets all over Nigeria, run by people. So we said, do cattle runs is cattle market. They said, no. What is the motive that you must be roaming the streets? You must go to our farm. What's the motive? It is not only about cattle running. It's about domination and occupation of this land. Because you want to spread yourself in this land, and then begin to claim the land. And there's a historical antecedent from Sokoto State down here. So it is not about cattle running. We are just trying to point it out that it's not about cattle running. Because if it is about cattle running, would you prefer bloodletting? 
violence and all the killings to an acceptable, proven alternative to say run ranch. Hmm. We are ready to give you land to run, but you say you must not run. You must go into the farms and you must destroy our economy. And they have succeeded. They have succeeded in destroying our economy today because we have never had this kind of inflation that we have here. I don't know how economists are going to describe it. We've never had this kind of inflation since I was born in this country. We have the worst form of inflation. But let me tell you, there's no famine in Nigeria. There is no drought in Nigeria. The land is still yielding. But we have this kind of artificially created, you know, inflation. Because the economy of the South that feeds us mm. has been destroyed. So the, it's an agenda. The agenda was well thought out and is being prosecuted. And Mieti Allah is the face of that agenda well, against the South. I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk to you about um, a couple of issues around insecurity in the country in a bit. But, but Felix, let's talk about a country like Ghana where cattle rearing is also very uh, a, a common trade. All right. Ghana is adjudged to be the second most peaceful country on the continent of Africa and one of the 50 across the world. Some persons will say, well, Ghana is a relatively small country. But is this about size or is it about something Ghana is doing that countries like Nigeria has refused to do? Uh, <coughs> my coach Gosant has expressed so much emotion mm -hmm. about this. A stranger, someone who just walked into the living room and is watching television will wonder, why is this so emotional? But the truth of the matter is staring at us as we are staring at each other here. Why won't it be emotional? And what's the bottom line here? Before 2015, did we have this kind of open assault on certain economy? Did we? You see, sometimes, well, because we are on public television, we we'll say, oh, be decent in your language be reserved in your expression we we'll maintain that policy we are not going to instigate people against other groups we are not out to incite we are here to inform to educate and to enlighten and if we are doing that we must work with facts and figures you just asked a question about ghana if you ask yourself, do you see cow on the street in ghana the answer is no I have been to Ghana many times. <laughs> and interestingly, each time I go to Ghana, I keep wondering, I say, why are these people so calm? What is it about them? And a policeman in Ghana has had cause to tell me that in Ghana, there are laws work. That's just the truth. A policeman that we interacted with, he told me, he said the laws work in Ghana. And he told me to my face that in Nigeria, your laws do not work. As painful as it is to me as a Nigerian, I had to swallow the pain and admit to the fact that if laws work in Nigeria, are you going to tell me that first when i was growing up people that used to follow cows up and down because it has always been there mm. we, they only hold stick i go to northern nigeria i stay in northern nigeria too and i see that even this issue of cattle rustling and the headsman farmers clash it has been on the only difference is that this time it is intensified this time it is deliberately orchestrated by the actions of the Mieti Ala Katahore and the inaction of the government. So there is a synergy between the government and the association. And if you take it back to Ghana, the president of Ghana, <laughs> Kofo Addo, openly said if any cow is seen in the street, it should be barbecued, meaning that cow should be slaughtered and given to the less privileged. Policemen in Ghana were drafted to the northern region of Ghana to go and clear all the cattle from the streets and from the farms. They were given much orders by the presidency in Ghana, and they carried it out. And the cattle owners in Ghana were now asking for time to please remove their cattle from the free range they were operating, oh. so that they can properly put them in what we call ranches. There are two types of cattle. You either have beef cattle or dairy cattle. Right. In Nigeria, which one do we have? We have mostly beef cattle. But our one is not even the highest grade. In fact, we cannot export our beef. It is the lowest grade possible. You know why? Because they parampolate everywhere. They get infected with all kinds of avoidable diseases and pests and everything. And we are celebrating that model in 2021. This is the model that, in fact, when they were developing what we call the wild, wild west in the United States of America, in the wild west, they never even did open grazing. They started ranching. 
they discover that if you keep the cattle in a place and you give them food, they are healthier. They are hay. They oh. take hay. They are healthier. They get bigger. And you get great nutrition from the protein that you get from this oh. cattle. But in Nigeria, the reverse is the case. So if Mete Allah is even saying what is wrong, which we know is wrong, and the government says, okay, there is a better process. Let us adopt this process. If you keep doing something the same way and you get the same result, until you change your pattern, you don't get a different result. So in Nigeria today, what we are doing is not going to put us forward. That's why the Ghanaians have sat down, thought of it, looked at what we call global best practices, and they said, okay, best thing is ranch all this cattle. The president openly came out and said, if any cattle is seen on the street, it should be executed. Hmm. All right. Our president also said in Nigeria, President Mohamed Bari said, if anybody is seen with AK-47, the person should be shot. But the thing is, what are you going to shoot the person with AK-47? Do you have a gun? You don't have a gun. AK-47 is an assault rifle that right. can spew out 50 bullets in a minute. So even if I have an English-made rifle, a double-barrel rifle, before I will reload, the person would have already brought me down. So I don't even have a rifle in the first instance. And meanwhile, those who have rifles, the same government in Nigeria said all their licenses should be withdrawn. They should turn in their arms. The ones with the headers are still with them. You see the ambivalence of this argument. Right. So it's not going to work. So if Ghana got it right, Ghana got it right because Ghana, first of all, identified the problem, identified the solution, Apply solution to the problem and they got a good result. Nigeria, we have identified the problem, we refuse to apply solution. And that is why Mieti Hala is still talking to the point of describing the sitting governor of Ondo State, <laughs> his son, Akre Dulu, was described by Mieti Hala as a tug. They said the anti grazing, anti open grazing bill that is being proposed by certain governors is satanic. Meanwhile, it is the same association that is standing and justifying the killings by their own associates of farmers, farmers' wives, farmers' children in different parts of this country called Nigeria. So this is why we are believing, therefore, that it is not just the issue of ranching. It is not the issue of open grazing. It is the issue of land grabbing. Oh. There is a deeper intention, and the intention is being expressed. Sometimes it's not even everything you say that is actually what you are doing. So what you are doing will even in the long term express what you have not said. Oh. But you can infer your intention from your action. And government is set up among men to regulate relations. Nigerian government has not done that. Nigerian government has been playing to the gallery telling people to live in peace with headers, telling farmers to try and be tolerant of headers. Why have you not restrained the headers? Each time it happens, it is not the farmers that go after the headers. I have said that and I will keep saying it anywhere. I'm not going to say any. There's no apology for this. It is always the headers that attack the farm because they will drive their cattle into the farm. The farm, the cattle will not eat all the crops, destroy the ones they can destroy. Sometimes even what you stockade in your barn, for example, your yam bands and your cassava. Cassava that is in the ground, they will approach the cassava and use their matches to slice it for their cattle to eat. They will go to the barn, root, remove yams that are staked, that are tied in, because you, in oh. bands, you tie yams. They will bring the yams down, the cattle will eat the yam, whatever is left, they will trample on it. Do you expect if the farmer that took months of hard work, invested sweat, time, effort, and resources? Meanwhile, we have not heard that the federal government has compensated any farmer. We have not heard that the federal government has come out with a policy to say any farm that has been destroyed for the so-and-so period that you are out of operation we will provide so-and-so relief for you as a farmer. The government has not done the reconciliation. The government has not acted as a government that should sit down and plan and project and take economic policies and programs as priority. Instead, what the government has been doing in Nigeria today uh, by, by open acceptance and acquiescence is that the government keeps saying, tolerate the headers. Uh, don't worry. Uh, they are our brothers. Uh, you just have to understand. They are trying to revive old grazing routes, oh. which is anachronistic, which is outdated, which cannot even work because the land use out of 1978 already that. Let me ask you something quickly. Yes. What, what, what does the anti-open grazing law mean for Nigeria's unity as it stands today? Because there's already a polarization of the north and the south no it's not polarization it, this is reality you see this is why we must understand that nigeria is a federation i think we are we we we, we joke too much in this country 
governors are our problems. If governors now begin to put their, you see, a governor is an elected representative of a constituent unit of this country. And that's what the governors have not been doing. They see the says as messengers from Abuja, where they have to go to Abuja every month to collect allocation and come back. That is not what a governor is. A governor is in charge of a unit. 36 units and the federal capital make Nigeria. So, I, if I'm in charge of a unit, I should be able to protect, provide, and plan for my unit. The difference here is because federal government controls security and the armed forces, mm. which is expected in the federation. But there are also areas that are exclusive, there are areas that are concurrent, there are areas that are also <laughs> open to mm. state governors. So in the concurrent list, the governors have powers. We have houses of assembly that can legislate for the states. If they sit up and say, yes, what is our duty? What's our primary, like we're always asking our economy, in our academic, we say, what is your proposed doctrine? Why were you established? Hmm. Answer that question. A governor was elected to govern a territory, govern that territory very well. If it means having to lock down that state, during last year, when COVID started, were we not especially locked down by governors? The governors don't lock down their states. You can also decide to now lock down the state and say, any cattle I see in any street, we have a lot of orphanages, send to the orphanage, whether the business will not change. The problem is not polarization. Uyi, let us be here. It is not dividing Nigeria. If it is going to help Nigeria know the path to follow to progress, you cannot continue to drive cattle on the street. Apart from the fact that it is not even physically aesthetic, it's not healthy. Do you know the harm cow do to people ordinarily on the road? They can stampede that kill people for the fun of it. You don't they react to certain colors. Right. Senators can also initiate their head instinct and they will begin to move. And as a herd, once cattle is in process, you cannot stop them. Consider, just consider the damage it can do. As many children are going to school in the morning and some there's, there's rampaging cow, head of cattle that runs to those children. How you how can you tell a parent that cattle, a cow ran across the child and kids child is going to school? What did the child do wrong to be a child in Nigeria of 2021? Oh. So there is no defense for it. The government and the governors, the governors have the one that, that have been, have been acquiescing. They have now woken up. That is why they came together in Lagos and said, okay, we'll give time to do this and this. They didn't just say, today it has ended. No, they still gave time. They are still right. working on it. Mm. Thank God the do state as well, assembly has now said that when they come back from their research, they will also constitute their own panel and sit on this matter. There's nothing wrong in it. It is not threatening. If it is going to help Nigeria okay. to develop very well. Okay. And please, let me quickly make this point. You cannot destroy national economy because of one particular area that is not constituting a major aspect of the economy. Agriculture is still a very, very big, important, and viable sector of Nigeria economy. The land is still very fertile. In fact, we are blessed with abundance in this country. Oh. Our problem is management of abundance. So if you want to rear your cattle and we give you land, we must clearly understand that cattle herding, cattle herding is private business. Great. And government should delink from it okay. and allow people to run it. And proper laws should be made by governors oh. and those laws should be properly implemented. It's not enough to make the laws. Oh. Implementation is going to be very critical. Oh. Very important. Great. Uh, as we wrap it up now, Chris, uh, let's yeah. talk about um, Governor Yes of Wiki of River State. Some mm -hmm. persons are saying that governors, particularly across the 17 southern states, can take a cue from what Governor Wiki is doing with the VAT issue uh, and then replicate it with this um, anti open grazing uh, bill. Do these governors uh, show you any courage along those lines? Yes. In fact, what Wiki has done is what I call gradualist uh, restructuring. Mm. Is, is begin to define a proper federation. That this component states of a federation has degree of independence inherent or can incubate upon it as a constituent mm. of a federation. A federation is a contract. Everybody submitted some degree of sovereignty to be part of that federation. So Wiki is defining the federation. Now, if you look at your TV, you find there in the tablet where it is written that today the certain governors are meeting many oh, yes. and they are reinforcing their stand on that consensus and they are reinforcing the stand that there is going to be banned on open grazing in the southern part of Nigeria. It has come to stay. It was declared in Asaba, in the Asaba Declaration. Right. It was not a knee-jerk 
decision. It was not a it was not a hurried decision. It was a decision that was taken after there had been too much evidence and too much data about the damage and destruction to lives and property that continued open grazing would cost to Nigeria and has been costing to Nigeria. Oh. So the government, like responsible leaders of the states in the 30, in the 70 states of the South, sat down in Asaba, considered it diligently, and came up with the decision. And it has come to stay. The noise of a social cultural organization that is arrogant because it has covering from the, 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 the present government is not going to affect the decisions and destiny of the southern part of Nigeria. We are going to have to decide that we are going to exist. Because what we are facing is an existential threat. It is a threat to annihilation of an entire race of people. Mm. And people are not just going to sit down and say, come on, annihilators. In fact, Achebe told us in one of his uh, parables that you cannot wipe out a community. However much you think you keep two or three, four months escape from that community. And they are going to regroup and still represent that community. So we are going to stand by our governors. Mm. And that is where the responsibility of people, as he mentioned, came in. People, the peoples of the South, are going to stand by governors. And I have said this thing before on television. The governors are involved here, we are discussing them, because we want the governor to lobby the House of Assembly. But it's not only the governor that can lobby the House of Assembly. We can set, we can come up with private bills on the same issue and push it to the House of Assembly. It doesn't have to be an executive bill. I mean, the rights of people are trampled every day. My rights is trampled every day. I can come up with an executive bill, I mean, a private bill, and push it to the House of Assembly hmm. to ensure that this law comes in place. So that on the basis of this law, you can have some actions. Okay. Yes. I think that's what we're living yes. with this discussion. Gentlemen, thank you for coming. Uh, you. Felix Osareme and uh, Christopher Ojekere to share with us this morning on this very topical issue. We do hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is what we're living into that discussion. We just want to take a quick break now. When we return, we're tied up on TMI this Thursday. Stay with me.